Hey guys, Trey here, and today I want to talk about vibe. The way you used to look at me, you're smiling, what it used to be, so come on over. There's a bird that just keeps coming right there. He knows I'm here. He's doing it on purpose. He's, he's actually growling at the same time he's chirping. I'm just going to let him get tired of sitting here. Fortunately, I'm not directly under him. So over the years as a producer, I feel like I've grown into being more of a producer and less of a songwriter. But at times I've sat at the table with music publishing people that have criticized the producer's role as a songwriter. Well, why is he getting songwriting credit? He's the producer. And that offended me a bit because I knew that somewhere in the process, whether I wrote lyrics or melody, or I came up with a, a, a beat or a progression, I knew that I was contributing somehow. In fact, in the past, I guess, as a songwriter, I've always been the first contributor. I'm the one that usually sets something up for others to write to. What does it mean for a producer to set it up in terms of songwriting? Just for a few minutes, I want to address vibe. If a producer walks in a room and he sets a tone, if he creates a vibe musically, that, that songwriters, top line writers that do melody and lyric, if they connect to that, then that's golden. I mean, you have to have somebody that starts the process off. And it, it doesn't have to come from the producer, but he cannot distract from it and he must contribute to it. We're trying to write something that is going to resonate with people uh, in, a, in a pop market. And that usually means we need to keep it simple and we need to touch on something that has emotional value and creates vibe. So for a producer, if I walk in the room and everybody's in there getting ready to write a song and I can lay down a beat and put behind that a chord progression and not just the beat and the chord progression, but also the sounds that I choose, if all of those things work in harmony to create vibe, what happens is immediately, and I've mentioned this before, but immediately the top line writers will connect and they will start to sing melodies. It's kind of the, the easiest way for me to know if I've been doing my job right over the first few minutes of a writing session. Are people singing melodies? Are they coming up with ideas? If they're sitting on the couch, stone-faced, and they're just really look, are looking down at the floor, or they're playing on their phones, um, no, you haven't done your job yet. But if you, but if you do create that vibe, uh, it's just it sends a wave of energy through the room, and people start connecting and writing melody and then writing lyrics. But if a producer creates a vibe that sets everybody else off, then he's written something. If you look at a basic songwriter sheet, there's room for the music guy. There's room for the uh, lyric melody person. But there's not a space on the songwriting form that says vibe. But uh, maybe there should be, because somewhere the vibe must begin. And that's when things just start to flow out of people. The greatest songwriters in the world will say, I don't feel so much that I created something uh, as, as much as it seemed like something was given to me in that moment. They seem to be channeling something that's flowing. So do producers, just as a producer's role, do they write? And I say, yes, they do. You can never discount what a good producer brings to the table in a writing session. And uh, so I want to take today, I want to take just a minute and show you one song that I kind of had to fight to set the vibe uh, when I was doing the track, but I want to show you how I knew when I hit the vibe. All right, so what we're looking at here is just the beat and synth progression for a song that I've shown you before in other videos, but I just want to talk about why I set it up the way I did and why I thought it would uh, really resonate with songwriters and help set the tone for them to create melodies. When I first built this, uh, my friend Ted Bruner, who I've written a lot with, came to me with an artist uh, that he was working with named Reed Deming. And he gave me uh, some, some general instructions. He told me uh, several artists that Reed really liked, that he felt like he wanted his music to sit, sit in the same sort of pocket with. So I went and listened to some of those artists. And from listening to several things, I put together this beat that I really liked.
just a snare and kick. That's all it was. And this is where the work came in. I started looking for a, a chord progression that I liked over the top of it. I can't remember all the ones that I went through, but probably on the second night I came back and I listened to what I had and I went, no. And so I came back again and I hit this particular progression. And as soon as I played it, I knew this was the one. So when I sent this out to Ted, it was a bullseye. He loved it. Uh, they wrote to it. The song, which I think turned out really well, this was where it starts. Everything that's built on top of it, melodies, lyrics, are all inspired by this. One other thing I threw in when I sent it to them And I thought that created a more compelling feel. That's what I'm talking about when I when I talk about vibe. All right, you guys, it's kind of early in the morning uh, when I made this video after a long night, so I apologize if there was some meandering. I hope that it uh, helps validate the producer's role in the songwriting process. Of course, I am biased. All right, there you go. You guys have a great day. If you like what I had to say, if it was worthwhile to you, please like, please subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the set. Until next time.